I was talking with someone who pointed out how using the state for animation can sometimes hurt performance. And I have to agree with him. When you are continually updating a state, for example, on mouse move, and that state is shared across multiple components, it forces all of them to continually re-render, and that's not good. This animation is a good example that reflects this problem. And thankfully, we're gonna solve it in a clean, declarative way using frame motion, and we're also gonna take a look at the CSS clip path value to hide part of a fixed element and create this split image effect. And as always, you can find the live demo and the source code in the description below. All right, so I have the starter project here, a very basic next app, and here I have a list of projects, and all of those projects have a handle that corresponds to a folder inside of the public folder. And so the first thing I want to create here is the basic layout. I'm just going to return a gallery for every single project that we have. Here I'm mapping the array of projects and returning a gallery component for each one of them. Then I add a next image and some styling. And the result is something like this. I have four images taking 120 viewport height. And now just for fun, I'm going to add a smooth scroll. And for that, I just go in the Lennon scroll documentation here. I copy paste the installation. And then I take the import statement and I can grab the basic setup and I can put it inside of a use effect hook and I should have something like this and I can use the use client declarative here and the result here is I have a smooth scroll on my whole page which is great. So now I'm ready to work on the vignette animation and to create this animation I basically need to return a vignette in every single project. I cannot have only one. If I have now four projects I need four vignettes and each of them will have their corresponding image and that's where the performance problem will come into play. But I'm just going to do the HTML and CSS first. Here. I add a container with a next image inside of it and I add some styling, a position fixed with top zero and a certain width and height. Okay, so I have all of my vignettes now. I basically have one for every single of my project and I've put them in position fixed. So they're now all stacked at the same spot, one on top of each other's. And what I want to do now is move that vignette on mouse move. And that's where the problem comes into play. So I have multiple options to move that vignette. I know I need to add a mouse event listener because I need to move that vignette based on the position of that mouse. So if we take a look at the structure here, I have a bunch of galleries based on the amount of projects that I have. And I could add an event listener on every single one of those galleries but that wouldn't be the best because I'll have like four different mouse event listener running at the same time and so better than that would be to have a mouse event listener on the parent and then in the parent I can register the x and the y position and I can pass down those values to the children and so one option that I could do is create a mouse move event with a mouse position state and on mouse move I will update that mouse position and then I could go inside of the gallery here and pass the mouse position to the children so that would be a possibility but the problem with that is what I stated earlier in the video every time I I move my mouse it will set the position of the mouse which will change the state and that change of state will re-render all of the children here and so I have a gallery of image with huge images that will get re-rendered every time I move the mouse which is really not the best and that's where firmer motion comes into play I talked with someone who suggested that I use the use animate function which is an imperative way of creating animations with firmer motion it's very similar to GSOP and I could do something like that for the vignette I could create a ref and then move that vignette imperatively and that way it won't re-render the whole component that would be one way of doing it but it's still not as clean because one it's imperative and I'd like to stay declarative since I'm using react and two I would need to create an event listener on every single one of the children which is again not the best because I don't want to have a ton of event listener running at the same time and so the use animate hook here is not an option either so now I had like three options and they're all not good for this case and that's where the motion values come into play and the main advantage is every single one of those motion values track a state internally and that means that setting a motion value will not trigger a re-render and so it's possible to inject a single motion value to multiple components and those changes will be reflected in all components and again without triggering a re-render and that's basically perfect for our case here so now instead of having a state i'm just going to have an object mouse position that will be equal to i can have an x and i will initialize the x using a use motion value and i can have it initialized at zero and on the y i can have a use motion value as well initialized at zero and then i'm passing down those mouse positions to the gallery and inside of the gallery here i'm just going to extract the mouse position from it and then I can extract here the x and y from the mouse position and to use those motion values I need to create a motion component so for that I just add the motion in front of the div here and I now have a motion component and I can use the styling here to put the x and the y and that motion comes from firmware motion and I forgot here in the mouse move function I'm not setting the state anymore so I'm just gonna remove that and instead what I can do is do the mouse position dot x and I'm gonna set to the client x and same thing for the y axis and that set method here comes from the motion value. And if I try this, I can see that I have all of my vignettes moving on mouse move. 
and I'm doing that without having to re-render the background image and all of the potential information I could have in every single one of my projects. And then I just have this one little problem where the vignette is not aligned with my mouse. So I can fix that easily. I can check my CSS here and remember that the vignette has a height and a width with certain values here. So I can use those same values here to create, instead of using like directly the client X and the client Y, I'm just gonna have a target X. I can do the client X and I can subtract here the window inner width multiplied by 25%. And then same thing, but for the Y axis here. And then I'll use those values instead of directly using the client X and the client Y the Y axis should be 30%. And now the problem is reversed. I just need to divide by two. And now it's perfectly centered. And now I have two problems left. One is the animation is not smooth at all. It's just following my mouse like that. It's not really appealing. And the other problem is I have the same image for all of the projects, which is not the desired effect. So I'm going to start with the first problem, which is not seeing the right image depending on the project. And for that, we're going to use the clip path. And what I wish would work is to simply use an overflow hidden on top of the galleries, but that doesn't work because those vignettes are placed in position fixed and a fixed element is position relative to the window. And so the overflow of the parent won't work, but the clip path will work though. And that's kind of a little trick, you know? So I can go in the gallery here and add a clip path and I'm going to use the polygon. And here I'm going to use like the fill rules. And it's a bit of the same paradigm as when you're creating your own SVG. So we're going to have a starting point at 0, 0. And then I'm just going to draw the boundaries here. I'm going to draw a line down. So I'm going to do 0, 100%. And then I'm drawing to the bottom corner. So I'm going to do 100%, 100%. And then I'm drawing the line up. So I do 100%, 0. And easy like that, it's going to create an overflow for the fixed element inside of the gallery. And already, if we take a look, we have the corresponding image to the background. And if I scroll here, you're going to see that now we have this corresponding image to the second gallery to the third gallery, and we have to the fourth gallery. And I personally think this animation looks really nice for the amount of code that we just wrote. And now I can tackle the last problem, which is the smoothness of the animation, right? The vignette is moving like a one-to-one -one ratio with the mouse. It's not smooth at all. It's just kind of doesn't look that good. So I'm gonna change something here. Instead of using simple use motion value, I'm going to use the use spring hook from Firmer Motion. And that use spring basically use a motion value in the background. It just applies a certain smoothness on top of it. And here I'm gonna add some options for the spring I can have here a stiffness I'm gonna use 150 I can have a damping I'm gonna use 15 and I can have a mass I'm gonna do 0.1 and those are basically the same values that I used in my last tutorial because I really like the physics of those properties and then I can just take the spring give it to the use spring here and easily like that I now have a smooth vignette there's a bit of a spring animation and a bit of a transition when I move the mouse and it looks already much better. And we're basically done with this animation. There's just one last step that I want to do to shout out the photographers that made these pictures because I really like them and I want to give all the credits to them. So for the last section, I'm doing essentially the same concept as the gallery component, but I'm replacing the background image by a bunch of paragraphs. I toggle the state when hovering on them to control which image is shown inside of the vignette and I add some styling to make everything look good. And with that, I have the final result, a nice gallery with a clipped image and here I have the description at the end shout out to those photographers so yeah that was it for this animation if you liked it leave a like subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye